You're listening to Power Talk, Berkeley Electric Cooperative's official broadcast about the cooperative, our communities, and ways to use energy wisely. And now, let's join our hosts for today's episode. Hello, 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 and welcome to the next edition of Power Talk. I am your host, Micah Ponce, and we have with us today Libby Roig, our co-host as always. Thank you for joining us, Libby. Yeah, another great BEC morning. Happy to be here. Well, glad to have you. And we also have a special guest today, one of our own energy experts, Mr. Josh Lauder. Welcome, sir. How's it going? Thanks, you guys, for having me. Doing well. Well, today's show, we're really going to sort of talk about high bill season and some of the things that we can do to mitigate that and help our members. Um, Because as we know, both December and January were extremely cold Mm -hmm. here at the co-op. Sure were. Yeah. And I mean, we're still in February, so we're still in high bill season. So there's a lot of things that our members need to look out for and ways that we can help them do that. Um, Speaking of high bills and in December, I know that we had um, a historic peak demand for Berkeley Electric. Um, we hit an all-time high uh, right around Christmas time. Not the gift that we wanted. <laughs> no, uh, we were much would have had like a, a white Christmas, but uh, instead we had a historic peak load, which essentially ended up doubling the number of uh, meters on our system. It had the same effect as and then adding a whole nother system on top of what we already do. So, I mean, it was definitely some cold weather and there's really things that we want to talk about today that we can help our members, um, you know, get through those cold snaps and save a little bit of energy. Yeah. I know at my house when um, my plants all die in the yard, I can expect a higher energy bill. My ferns, my beautiful ferns are now nothing. They're toast. They got nuked. Yeah. We estimated 2.3 times um, members' normal bills. So, I mean, if you were using 100 kilowatts for a day, you used, you know, close to 300 for that day. And that's just um, equipment just having a tough time keeping up when it's cold. No, I think a lot of people, they have a tendency to think, well, you know, I didn't do anything different. So why is my bill higher? You know, I didn't touch my thermostat. I didn't make any changes. So why did my bill get so high? In those situations, what would cause something like that, Josh? Um, I mean, your, your equipment down here, luckily we don't have that many cold days, but the ones that we do, your equipment just has to run most of the day. I mean, the bigger the gap between the temperature outside and whatever your desired temperature is, you know, that, um, that signifies how much your unit's going to have to run. And then of course, heat strips come into play to kind of help push, get to your desired temperature. Um, you know, some people may have equipment failure and have to use emergency heat, but that of course should Never be used unless you're worried about, you know, freezing in your home. Yeah, definitely. You know, I've I've got one of our smart thermostats, and um, I'd like to say I'm an Ecobee evangelical. Yes, ma'am. But, um, I love it, too. Yeah, I mean, but my Ecobee talks to me about a variety of things, um, all thermostat-related things, not <laughs> life advice or anything. But, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it'll give me an alert when my heat strips are running or that auxiliary heat is running um, more than the recommended time. And, you know, because... From the benefit of, of working here, I know, yep, my, my bill's going up. Yep. You know, and for those time. of you who have the uh, the old style thermostat, like I do in, <laughs> in the house, I'm still part of the slide gang, you know, <laughs> yeah. sliding it back and forth. Um, you'll know the emergency heat's on when you get the nice little red or a blue light that shows oh, yeah. up on mm-hmm. on your thermostat. Um, and like we said, that's, that's called electric resistance heat. And unfortunately, that has a tendency to really drive the bill up kind of quickly. And the way that you mitigate that is, is you try to just take that thermostat and slide it down or set it back a few degrees as much as possible, throw on another sweater, put on another blanket. And uh, because heating and cooling can account for about 50% of your bill each month. So anything Mm -hmm. that you can do to try to, you know, save a little degree here and there, I think it wants what about two to 5% per each degree that you get off the recommended setting. It's closer to 4%, 4%. each degree. So each degree you go down um, in the wintertime. You know, if you have your setting to 70, but then you opt to go 69, that's 4%, you know, cheaper on your bill, and then so on and so forth. And then in the summer, of course, it's opposite. You know, the higher up you go on your temperature. Um, I mean, I, I keep mine whenever I'm away from the home, probably like 64 in the winter, and then 82 just because when I'm not home, I just don't want my unit to run, costing me money, so... Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, we've got a great show for the listeners today, but um, before we get into talking about the details of um, some of our programs, Josh, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself? What brought you to BEC and, and what all does your job entail here? I definitely have a unique road to getting here. Um, <laughs> I, I'm from the mountains of uh, western North Carolina, grew up in Hendersonville and uh, got a bachelor's of communications from Western Carolina, where the catamounts, but I'm still not sure what a catamount is. I mean, it's of the cat family, but I think it's uh, like a mountain lion. I, th- I think so too. I think, I think it's like a mountain lion. <laughs> I've never seen one though, so it's like one of those things. It's like Bigfoot. I don't know if it exists or not. Um, if you know listeners, please send Josh an email. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Please, please let me know. Let me know. But I want legit footage, so I know. You know, I I need more than just you know one picture. Skeptical. Yeah, yes. You, you it, want proof. It, you want proof. Exactly. Um, while I was up at Western, um, I got into DJing a lot and DJed um, for many, many years. Uh, a DJing career spanning 15, 15 plus years and uh, probably over 200, definitely over 200 weddings. I lost count. Um, so I was a certified wedding crasher. Oh, there you uh, go. Essentially, which is pretty cool. I mean, if you're a DJ, you should be on this side of the booth. Oh, yeah. yeah. Be running this thing, pushing the buttons over here. I don't know if I'm coming out of retirement, you know, for that. But, um, nah, so, um, I, uh, after I had kids and stuff, I started working on Joint Base Charleston, did a lot of odd jobs out there. Um, you know, a lot of jobs in logistics, you know, um, supporting the military. Um, one of the coolest things I was doing out there was, uh, running convoys from, uh, you know, the, the base to the wharf, um, you know, just in case things happen. So it's just more proactive approach, um, project that I was working on, but I heard about a job out of BEC, um, for an IT job and, uh, I ended up getting the job and did that here for six years. And then, um, finally made the move to, uh, energy services, uh, a little over a year ago or right at a year ago. And, um, uh, I, I love what I do now. I get to get out in the field, interact with folks, you know, save them money on their power bill. Cause Despite what a lot of people think, um, Berkeley Electric wants people to have low power bills. That helps our grid out. Um, you know, we, we want people to use what they need, but of course, you know, not have a high bill due to, you know, equipment failure or something like that. So, sure. and I'm finally getting to use my communications degree and, you know, the group I work with, they're just, they're awesome, you know, from top to bottom. So. Um, and, you know, talking about saving members money, I mean, we were talking about the, the high peak that we had, the high peak demand. And part of the way that we were controlling or trying to make that, you know, to lessen that peak was through some of our programs mm-hmm. that we have and through some of the control efforts that we yeah. have here at the co-op. Yeah, you know, first and foremost, we're thrilled to report that despite this record peak that we had on our system, the system did great. Yep, it it performed well. Um, we're really proud of the investments we've made in our system. But um, we have a couple of different load control programs. Uh, the thermostat program that um, I'm a member of uh, through the Ecobee, we, we have a couple options for how to join that. They dial, dial your thermostat during peak usage periods um, to, to help with that overall system resiliency and to lower demand where we can. And how it works a few times a month uh, for a few hours, they just first will increase your your um, temperature in your home by a couple mm-hmm. of degrees so you notice it a little bit less and then for a couple hours they'll dial it back and, and not let it run at, at full force so during the winter time that's usually in the early morning because mm-hmm. that's when it's coldest right so six, six to ten yeah six to ten a.m so you know most of the time I don't even notice it you know even five to nine sometimes um you know so you know, like Mike said, you throw on an extra sweater. Um, but if it's not a good time for you, if you've got your grandma staying with you and she's sensitive to the cold, you can opt out in real time. Just change your mm-hmm. thermostat back and it'll tell you you're opting out. And um, But it help, when everybody makes small changes, right. it helps overall for the system, for your power bill, our collective power bills. So, um, yeah, these, these programs do a lot of good. And for folks who are listening, and if you're not aware, we do have something that's called the Beat the Peak program, since mm-hmm. we're talking about peaks. Mm-hmm. And that actually, um, you sign up for however you want to get the alerts, but it sends you free alerts either through text or through email to let you know when we do hit one of those peak times. And like Libby just said, we ask you to reduce the use, if at all possible, um, you know, 
hold off on doing that load of laundry or, or run in the dishwasher, or maybe wait a little while to start cooking that meal. And every little bit that people shift their energy use off mm-hmm. of that peak, it helps everybody because yeah. when there's a peak load, that's when electricity costs the most money. Yeah. So the more that we can get that peak down, that helps all the members of the co-op. So if you're interested, beatthepeak.com. Uh, you can sign up through our website or you can go directly there. So that's just another great way to to monitor your energy use mm-hmm. and it's an easy way you just get the alert boom and yep. if you're home and you can make those efforts we appreciate it and yep. so do your fellow members <laughs> <laughs> and uh to touch on the ecobee i'm i'm on that bandwagon too i i, I love the ecobee thermostat you can you can also play music on it yep. you know that doesn't help yep. you obviously to save money <laughs> but it's kind of cool if you have company come over or whatever but um yeah, I mean, the DJ like, would know. Okay. Yes, yes, that would be very important. That was Josh. that was the first thing that he figured out. Yeah. <laughs> How do I set up my playlist on on my thermostat? <laughs> we we, we got to get you an EcoBee. <laughs> like, I feel bad that you have to manually go up. You you don't have an app That's on your phone. That's how I get my you exercise. Use. You know, I, <laughs> I remember that when I was a little kid. That kind of thermostat. Yeah, sort of like when you used to have to get up and go change the TV <laughs> channel. You know, for some of those folks who are listening, they may not remember that. Um, yeah, you, there were there were no remote controls. Your child was the remote control you know (laughs) get them go change the tv i want to watch the news now i have the strongest index finger ever because i go up and change it from heat to cool on the regular (laughs) um you know we were talking about all the different types of programs that we've got out there and you know a, a lot of times even if you are monitoring your um, your power on a fairly regular basis. Sometimes things can can slip through, mm-hmm. and there might be problems that you're not aware of. And Josh, I understand we have something that's uh, like a proactive billing program that we just sort of do automatically for members. How does that work? We do. Um, it's it's a great part of what we do. Um, some of you folks um, out there may have gotten a courtesy call from uh, myself or or a member of our team. So. Um, not everybody does this. Um, there's a lot of power companies that your bill is just your bill. And if your usage goes exponentially high from one month to the next, you get no alert. Um, you don't have anybody essentially cold calling you and telling you that there's a problem with your um, system. So if, let's say, a member used 1,000 kilowatt hours one month in November and then December, they went up to 3,000. Um, sometimes it could just be cold weather, you know, and peaks on the system and everything. But uh, a lot of times there's usually an issue um, and those issues, it's it's usually HVAC. Um, you know, like we were talking about, the EcoBee will let you know about your strip heat running, which that strip heat mm-hmm. is so expensive. Um, sometimes a stuck relay could happen, and it could just run all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, you could have a water heater leak. Um, we so many of those, yeah. so many water heater leaks. Um, you know, and a lot of folks think that a water heater leak is just something you can see. You know, a lot of people have them in their garage. Um, some people have them in their ceiling. If they have them in their ceiling, they definitely yeah. know if they have a leak <laughs> uh. for sure. But, um, but you know, it, I'll call up a member and I'll say, hey, this is just a courtesy call from Josh here at Berkeley. Um, your bill has went up. And, and thank you. Big shout out to our billing team because the billing team, you guys are amazing at, at making this project go um, and helping out our members. Well. But they'll they'll send us accounts and we'll we'll call these people and say hey i just want to help you in any way i can yeah and we've had the proactive high bill review for several years but Mm -hmm. um we take it for granted but it is something really revolutionary that um, eddie plowden and our billing department joined forces and developed it and it's it's such a great program that eddie's actually done national seminars on how it works right. to other cooperatives so that they could help our members. And it, it really is a shining example of how, of the cooperative different, <clears throat> di- difference and um, us going the extra mile. You know, we've had some yeah. members say, you know, it's bad when the electric company calls me and tells me I'm using too much power. <laughs> <laughs> And a lot of it's dependent, too, upon the fact that we actually have advanced metering systems in place. So, I mean, there are a lot of utilities that still haven't upgraded to the types of meters that Mm -hmm. we're using. And those meters actually give us a lot of data. We don't know what you're using in your home. Uh, We we can't see when you turn on the TV. We don't know what you're watching. (laughs) But we can see when all of a sudden, like we said, there's a big spike in electricity. And, I mean, honestly, I wish that I'm not going to put anybody on the bus. But I wish that my electric company um, could have had that program because I actually had a water heater issue that I wasn't even aware of because our water heater is, we've got an old house. And so they stuck it in a closet that's like in a little 
nook in my hallway. So I rarely see my water heater, rarely think about my water heater. And over the course of a week or so, I started noticing musty smell. Mm. And I was like, what is this musty smell? And then so I opened that door and apparently some critter had gotten underneath my house and chewed through the water line. Yep. And so water was spraying into that closet for I don't know how long. So had to oh, get geez. that repaired, had to do all kinds of drywall repair, and and yeah. it could have been caught a lot quicker yeah. if we had had something like proactive billing, you know, through through the company that I'm with. Yeah. I bet and you open that closet door more down, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> and if you hadn't discovered it on your own from the smell, you would have gotten your bill and oh, yeah. had the sticker shock. and. You know, energy used has been used, and we can't turn back the clock. But if you go from using $2 a day to $20 a day, and you get a call from Josh, you can flip the breaker or whatever until we figure out what the issue is Mm -hmm. and save yourself hundreds and hundreds of dollars in the end. We um, always use the term um, stop the bleeding, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm because, you know, if they have an issue... The unfortunate part about my job is, you know, a lot of members, when they have a water heater issue or something like that, they'll call and say, you know, or I'll I'll do the proactive approach and let them know. They'll say, can we get that back? Once the power is used, it's it's gone. You know, it's uh, it's been used, but we stop the bleeding with this proactive program. And like you said, turn off the breakers and stuff. That's how you can, uh, you know, stop the issue. But um, (laughs) proactive bills are are one of my favorite things to do about Mm -hmm. this job. Um, it's just kind of weird to see whenever I, you know, like if I give you a call, you know, like you said, it's weird. I'm getting a call from the power company mm-hmm. and they're usually a little apprehensive <laughs> yeah, at never, first. It's usually never a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> they're usually apprehensive at first, but then, you know, I go through some of the things with them and say, Hey, I'm looking at, uh, you know, graphs of your data and everything. And, uh, here's what's, here's what I think is going on. And, and a lot of that is looking at the data, but just talking to the member and finding out. Yeah. Oh, you know what? There there has been an issue with my water pressure or I've noticed that there's heat coming out of my vents and it's 80 degrees outside in the right. summertime. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so um, but usually by the end of the call, they're very appreciative and they're very happy. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's just a great thing that we do. And like I said, no, hardly any other power companies are doing that. Right. Uh, and, you know, proactive is one of our investigative methods to, to find out issues that are going on in the home. But, I mean, for whatever reason, if we can't just look on the screen through yeah. the data and you think that there's something else that might be going on, we also offer energy audits where we'll mm-hmm. come out to the home um, at no additional cost, um, you know, for you to be able to have an in-home audit with one of our energy experts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We, um... Yeah, it's it's a great thing. You know, a lot of times we can diagnose something from just looking at your data, but mm-hmm. you know, sometimes there's an issue where I, I just need to come, you know, put a boots on, yep. boots on the ground, boots on the ground, boots on the ground. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, and one of the things for those energy audits we do um, is called a blower door test, mm. and um, it's a requirement nowadays for for new homes. Um, they got to be a certain level of tightness. You know, no leaks, and uh, you know, you don't want air escaping or entering your home. Um, especially if you're trying to fill it up with heat, you know, keep it comfortable or, you know, fill it up with AC. So we use, um, it's like a nylon curtain. Um, it's got a fan on it and there's a couple of hoses that go to a manometer, manometer. <laughs> Say that three times fast. <laughs> I know. I, I, I struggle with it all the time. Um, but it's essentially the test, you know, gives us a score and we convert that into air changes per hour. And that will tell you, um, it basically makes problems rear their ugly head in your home. As far as, um, you know, maybe under a sink or you have a back door that needs some weather stripping and stuff like that. And, um, you know, another thing we do after we do some of these audits is I'll send the member a list of some things that they can do. Some of this stuff you can do eight to ten dollars worth of supplies at Lowe's. Just go buy a couple of tubes of caulk sometimes. All it takes. Didn't you say you um, get some weather stripping? I did. That was actually some advice that I got from one of our HVAC contractors, um, Mike from Air Concepts. He was like, you know, this uh, weather stripping around your doors, um, it's been painted on and it's no longer effective. So it the paint hardens the weather stripping so it's not it as malleable. So, yeah, I went out. I, I spent more than 8 to $10 because I got... <laughs> 
top of the line, but um, yeah, the like the Gucci or the Louis Vuitton weather yes. stripping for your yes. door. Yes, it actually <laughs> the has the branded. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> has you know the the different logos on it. Yeah, no, um, but no, I you know I I we live and breathe this stuff. I believe in it for my home. Um, in the winter time, the highest our thermostat goes is sixty eight. You know, dur- at night it gets lowered um, while we're away. It gets lowered, but and then the summertime seventy eight. So try to practice what we preach and you really don't have to necessarily be an energy expert to be able to find some of these problem yeah. areas i mean we're glad to come out there and and mm-hmm. do these audits for the folks but i mean there's some simple measures especially this time of year when it's when it's really cold outside yeah if you stand near the front door and you can like put yeah. your just put your hand near <laughs> the edges of your door and if you can feel the cold coming through mm-hmm. well that's a that's a pretty clear sign that you're yeah. going to need some additional weather stripping yeah. um, and a lot of folks really don't even think about it but i mean if you take the the area the crack around your entire front door and you turn it that into like a hole that comes out to be like a two inch hole in your wall yeah that cold air is just streaming in and out of your house and because you really don't think about it yeah because it's just one of those simple things that you live with every day but i mean it's same thing with outlets especially on exterior walls if you go up to an outlet on an exterior wall a switch or something just hold your hand out there and if you can feel feel any kind of air Mm -hmm. movement especially cold air yeah perfect time of year to do it you know that you've got a little bit of work to do um and they make all kinds of like we said easy to find products to help button things up Mm -hmm. and you know and every building's unique so i mean We've, we've talked about it before. I'm, I feel like it should be on an episode of This Old House. Because <laughs> mine was built in 1954. So they built them strong. But back then, they really weren't concerned with energy efficiency the yeah. way that we are today. So um, one of the things that Josh had mentioned was the old uh, blower door test. And it, it, I think that it equalizes the pressure in your house between the inside and the outside. But with my house, we couldn't even really get a blower door <laughs> test done because there was so much air being sucked out of my house that it was like ripping the, the blower door out of the frame. So, uh, yeah, I had to buy more than just uh, one or two tubes of caulk. I had to buy <laughs> several cases of caulk to try to button everything up. And so if you just think about it, like like to your point about the house, the, the tighter a house is, the, the longer you're going to keep AC in there or you're going to keep heat in there, you know. If, uh, you know, Micah has a bunch of leaks and a bunch of spots, you know, that need attention, you know, he may, you know, heat up his house and, you know, turn his unit off and then 45 minutes he needs to, you know, turn it back on and everything. Whereas you got a super tight house like a lot of these new houses, you know, they call them what, cookie cutter mm-hmm. and in the neighborhoods mm-hmm. and stuff, they use the door, blower door to depressurize and uh, those houses are really tight and they're actually, you know, the scores that we get – you kind of say that the that the score you want it to be close to the square footage that's considered mm-hmm. you know a very very good score but some of them can actually be under the square footage yeah. like my home is under the square footage um so you do run the risk of a home being too tight mm-hmm. right you do need some fresh air in there it's gotta breathe you don't want to have moisture issues and stuff like that during the summertime you know that's definitely something that people have to watch out for um so there's a balance there is. so uh, josh what are some of the common problems that you see our members having the biggest thing honestly with members i I feel like they look at the wrong things Mm -hmm. they're always um you know saying well my bill can't be high because i only do laundry once a week or Mm -hmm. i don't use the stove all that much Mm -hmm. um we even get during christmas time you know neighbors will be comparing their christmas light uh (laughs) volume to their next neighbor they're like well micah over here has twice as many lights as i do and his bill is less than mine. Well, mean, meanwhile, you have a, a house full of people that, you know, that you come home for Christmas and they're yeah. taking longer showers. And washing towels. Washing yeah. towels and, mm-hmm. and cooking more meals and things of that nature. Like like we said, everything's unique. It is. I mean, from the, and when we say unique, we're talking about, you know, every, every door frame. And when I, when I do a blower door test, it's, I never look like a complete expert because every door frame is not cut the same way, <laughs> you know, and that's just a good representation of a home. You know, you have different different heights of ceilings, um, you know, cathedral ceilings, seven foot ceilings, um, layouts are different. Everything is different in a home, you know? So, I mean, you have to pay attention to what you have and make sure you're doing a good job, um, you know, taking care of the things you need to take care of. So, um, we, we get that, um, 
but really, when you have a high bill, your HVAC equipment and your water heaters, mm -hmm. those are what's going to cause your bill to be high. And, and a good representation of an HVAC system, that's usually the culprit. The, the water heater is actually not that bad if um, it's working properly and doesn't have a leak like we were talking about earlier. Because you're talking about 4.5 kilowatt hours if you have a leak and the water heater is just continually running. Mm -hmm. um, and that's as high as it can get. So, But we look on the bill to see if you know the member's base load is 4.5. And, and then, of course, on top of that, you would have everything else that's going on in the home. Um, but the HVAC system can get a little more complicated. So you have your um, whatever your size unit is, and of course that's based on the home size. Mm -hmm. you, right. know, you don't want an oversized heat pump or an undersized heat pump because either one is going to give you a different set of issues. So you know, um, luckily our HVAC contractors they do a great job of you know um, looking at the total volume of the house and not just the square footage and taking yeah. account the ceilings and stuff. But um, if you have a three ton heat pump then essentially that's three kilowatt hours when that's in what we call heat pump mode. And heat pump mode is just when, you know, your unit doesn't have to really, really work hard. When it's not too cold and stuff like that, the temperature's pretty mild outside. It's just got to go up a few degrees to give you your desired temperature. But when it gets cold, the aux heat, as some people call it, or strip heat, that's another five kilowatt hours right. added on yeah. top of the three. And then you got, you know, around Christmas time, like you're talking about, there's tons of people in the house doing different things. Um, you also got maybe eight extra people messing with the thermostat. <laughs> so we see a lot of times somebody putting it on emergency heat, oh, which has no. to be done manually, especially on a system like Micah's, you know. With the, yeah, mm, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, and if you're fancy, you might have a hot tub outside that you, oh, you fire yeah. up during the wintertime. It's time. inflatable. <laughs> <laughs> and I got a great deal on it. <laughs> but uh, I... I, I made a mistake with that, though. I have to bring up. Um, I, I had to drain it because I didn't. I wanted to run it during Christmas weekend, mm. but uh, I just thought about like it looks really nice, it looks appealing, but then when I get out, I felt like I was going to turn into an icicle. Yeah. So I was just like, when it's I, 19 degrees outside, <laughs> that's not a walk yeah, I would want to make. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but I never got in it. But I never ran any of the water, so the water kind of got a little. Ugh. You know, like that, like that smell you had in the closet. Yeah, the water heater. Yeah, it, yeah. it was probably that same type of smell. So I just I cleaned it out and everything, and yeah, you know. All right. Well, we've talked a lot about how our energy experts can come out and find the problems in your home, but what are some of the options for taking care of those issues once we've identified them? We have an amazing program. Um, we call it the Home Advantage Loan. Um, where a member can get on our website and they can sign up. You know, it's it's doing energy improvements to the house. Um, it's not just, you know, getting your heat pump replaced or whatever, um, but we finance 5% on bill financing up to $15,000. And the idea is you have better equipment, which will run more efficiently, lower your power bill, and kind of offset the cost of that. Loan. Yeah, so basically it pays for itself in the end. Yes, yeah. right. it does. And there, there's also a bunch of rebates that are coming out now that you'll be able to put on your taxes for next year. Yeah, for the... Um, Great what's it called the dual fuel heat pumps where they're um instead of hitting that auxil expensive auxil auxiliary heat it kicks in gas so you get the best of both worlds yeah. it does and um you know a little clarification on the dual fuel it's mainly for neighborhoods it's not really cost effective like in my neighborhood we don't have natural sure. gas but in a sure. natural gas uh, neighborhood like a fox bank or a cane bay um dual fuel is by far you'll save about 300 dollars every winter yeah uh, buying a dual fuel system they're not that much more expensive um plus the rebates and the thousand dollars that berkeley will give yeah, you yeah and then the government will kick in what up to another two thousand two thousand yep. yeah. somewhere yeah. around there yeah so three thousand for a dual fuel if you live in a natural gas area yeah or, it's it's a no-brainer if, awesome. you, if you live in one of those communities and take advantage of that but i mean even if you don't the home advantage loan you know a lot of folks don't have nine thousand dollars, you know, roughly sitting around. So, sure. I mean, th this program through Berkeley is amazing, and I, I do these weekly. Yeah. So we've talked a lot about water heaters. We have a couple of programs: a warranty program as well as a load control program for our water heaters. More information is on our website, yep. BerkeleyElectric.coop. Um, and then we also have our smart thermostat program, where you can get the. Uh, the latest greatest smart thermostat for basically free yeah there's i mean there's no gimmicks or anything you literally get one free per household 
Um, it's it comes to about one sixty two and change uh, for the second one. Like I have two thermostats in my house, so I had to pay for one. But even that one sixty two is still way cheaper than what somebody could go um, get one. Yeah, on their own. Well, lots of great information today. Yep, and Josh, thank, thanks so much. Thank you for coming on, DJ, and Appreciate thanks to everybody <laughs> else for listening. Um, don't forget to watch this episode on your our YouTube channel, and you can find us now on all the popular podcast platforms as well to catch up on past episodes. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.